Have you ever wondered what it takes to convert a house into a HMO? Well, if so, this video is for you because today I'm in Birkenhead, Liverpool, visiting my good friend Oliver Walsh, and we're here to take a look around his latest HMO project. Properly kicked off at the start of the month. We were going to manage all the trades ourselves to start with, but then we decided with all the other stuff we've got going on that it'd be better just to employ a single contractor. Contractor that I've used before, quoted up for this, the price is reasonable. Fully started at the start good. of the month. So you don't have to like fully project manage with everyone in and out. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So we check in every now and then. The, the contractor that we're using is uh, has got a very good reputation. He's done work for me before as well. So uh, I feel pretty safe to leave it as hands off as possible. So the, the big change since you were last here is we got all of the windows replaced. So the original windows were all um, wooden, uh, single glazed windows. Yeah. I think there were 22 sets of windows in the end. So wow. they're all now modern double glazed windows. No, no trouble with doing that with the age of the building or anything? No, no restrictions around here? No, cool. no, it's not in a conservation area or anything like that. So you can replace the windows without any permissions. Nice, that'll be good going forward. The room we're in now, this is gonna be bedroom one. Yeah. It's not gonna be quite as big as it seems right now. So say, um, it does feel big. Yeah, so basically what we're doing is we are gonna put a wall up here and here and then entering from that door, this will be kind of a little utility room. Okay. So that'll be where the boiler, couple of cylinders for the for the water system and the washing machine, dishwasher, that, that kind of stuff. And then there will be an ensuite for this room here and then this will be kind of the rest of the room. So it'll be nice. I think it's still be quite room. big, wouldn't it? I think the minimum size room we have is 10.5 meters squared. So they're all double rooms. Yeah, lots of space, lots of light in all of them. So good. I see this, yeah, I'm excited already. Yeah. So, so it's very um, different to what you and I, well, the other ones I've seen of yours, obviously. Yes. It's quite a different project. Yeah, this is the, the biggest one by far that I will have done. I'm doing it with a couple of business partners who have done HMOs before, so they've got more experience than I do. But uh, Does that help with like, yeah, the regulations and stuff? Just absolutely, on it? absolutely. Although, don't think either of them have done um, one's quite as big as this before. And as soon as you go over six beds, the regulations yeah. become even more stringent. So there's a lot of things we're having to do, which we weren't expecting to start with. Like a lot okay. of the, the sound insulation that we have to do is much more strict than we thought it would be. Right. Uh, all of the thermal insulations that you have to do, it's essentially like we're building three separate flats here. So yes, more expensive and yeah. uh, more intense than we originally planned, but that's always the way. Did you decide on six or seven beds? We, we got a lawful development certificate to turn yeah. this into a six bed HMO. Mm -hmm. So you can do that under permitted development. So we're gonna build it out as that, and then we're gonna have a separate lounge and a separate co-working space. And we're gonna operate this as a six bed HMO with a co-working space and a, and a lounge while we put in a separate full planning application to turn those rooms into, into two extra bedrooms. Interesting, so you get it cash flow and get the money in. Exactly, and uh, yeah, so anything over a six bed, you have to go for a full planning application. Right. We're not in an article four area here or, or anything like yeah, that, yeah. but just, yeah, anything over a six bed needs but full Rather than permission. waiting and then that possibly being denied, just crack on with the works. Exactly, and also we figured it would be better to have six bed HMO up and running rather than keep this as a single family dwelling and go in for a full planning application Makes to sense. take it from one house to an eight bed HMO. Because you're already halfway there. Exactly, and also yeah. the council, we hope will look at it and be like, okay, well the impact is actually going from six bedrooms to eight bedrooms rather in than. what already is an HMO rather than a single house to an eight bed. Yeah, that makes good sense. I didn't even think about that yeah. element of it. So yeah, that makes good sense. Yeah. So this is bedroom number two. Um, this one will be really nice actually because this is gonna have its own little patio outside. We've got a communal garden out there, but this one will have its own little fence and patio That's area. That's a good idea, yeah. Which will be nice. Um, Charge more for the room. Yeah, it, it should get a little bit extra on the rent. This is gonna be the ensuite here. This is currently open. This is gonna be where the shower is. So it'll literally just be like a shower tray going in here. So originally this was like the dining room and yeah, this was I open. Yeah, re I somewhat remember this, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good. And this was the kitchen, wasn't it? Before? And then this was the kitchen. So for the six bed HMO, this is going to be a co-working space. So that was the original door leading into the kitchen to start with. Yeah. We've opened it up here. So this is the new door that's going to lead in here. Yeah. So you put new lintels in throughout. Yeah, new yeah. lintels in throughout. That we actually did ourselves. Um, we got some trades in to do all of the opening up of the various brickwork before the contractor came in. So we kind of handed it over to the contractor when it had been fully ripped out and fully sort of opened up. Then here, this is where the old back door used to be that we bricked up. Yes. And here in the six bed HMO version, this is gonna be like a storeroom. So we're gonna put up like this. And then in the eight bed version, assuming we get planning permission, the ensuite. 
for oh, this room. Yeah, that makes complete sense. So this yeah. would be, a, I mean, for those that move in sooner, it'd be a really nice co-living room. Absolutely, so. absolutely. And nice and bright for what, in the future for when hopefully it is a bedroom. Yeah, yeah, three yeah. windows and stuff, so. I was just so impressive, like the size of the rooms and the ceiling height. It's I, just... I can't get over the size of this property. Yeah. Like every time I come <laughs> yeah. in. And particularly, you'll see upstairs, we've got a lot of the uh, the woodworks going in. And yeah. so you can see the size of uh, how big the rooms are going to be. And all of them are just fantastic sizes. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm, I'm blown away by it. So then back through here, a new back door. So this was a window here. <clears throat> and now yep. this is the new back door that will lead out into the driveway. Uh, and we're now on the other side of that front bedroom. Exactly. So that will be the entrance into the utility room in there. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, it makes complete sense so yeah. far. have all that space with sound insulation and well a lot of it is just going to be void space because we've got so many en suites we're going to have oh, to yeah. put a lot of the, the soil pipes going underneath and yeah. also we've got me mechanical ventilation above the en suite so we need a space to put all the vents and that kind of stuff so it just makes sense to have that exactly and it's still a good ceiling height but yeah make space for all the insulation and also it'll be better for the the epc as well yeah less room to heat yes that's true yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh and again, lots of light in this room. We've got essentially four windows, including the window in the ensuite. Yeah, I can see what you mean now. 22 windows, whatever you said, they're everywhere, aren't they? Windows so, absolutely everywhere. Um, this is another bedroom in here, good size. This will be the ensuite for this bedroom in here. Oh, right, okay. So that was just part of the, the hallway Yeah. originally, and but it's that, a lot of wasted space yeah, there. Yeah, you're right, actually, yeah. Like, did you come up with the layout? Or did no, you no, an so architect the, or? yeah, so the yeah. architect, Grant Erskine, um, who specializes in HMOs, he, he did all the plans for us. Um, and then we had a separate planning consultant who put in for our uh, lawful development certificate yep. for the six bed. Soon we'll be putting in for the full eight bed application as well. Yeah, it's impressive. I like the layout so far. I think it just makes so much sense. Yeah, it's, it's a good use of space. Yeah, definitely a good use of space. So this is going to be the kitchen living area. This is massive, loads of light in here, five windows. I love this on the first floor. Yes, first floor, so it? that's the, the reason for that is for regulations for HMOs. Bedrooms have to be within one floor of the kitchen space. So we wouldn't have been allowed to put the kitchen on the ground floor because then the bedrooms on the top floor will be two floors away from it. So okay. it's worth bearing in mind for any projects you might have. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, um, bit annoying really, because obviously <laughs> the kitchen was downstairs and, but it's just. It's so just when you see that sometimes, that, you know, people do three story ones, they simply can't have the kitchen downstairs. Or they'll have a kitchen downstairs, but they'll have another kitchen on the top floor. Got it, okay, or like more like individual kitchens in rooms. Exactly. Because that makes sense, because mm. I met Alfred at his Coventry ones, mm. and he, his obviously kitchen dining room is on the ground floor, but then in a lot of the rooms they had little kitchenettes in them, yeah. so therefore you, I guess you'd get around that, would you? I don't know specifically if that would get around it, if, if, it would, if there were proper cooking facilities in the rooms, yeah. that might get around it. But as far as I know, unless there are, yeah, proper cooking facilities in the rooms, you just have to be within one floor of uh, yeah. the kitchen facilities. So. Learn something new every day. Regulations are changing all the time. So. Yeah, yeah. And also, um, when I came last time, this was obviously two rooms, wasn't it? So yeah. knock them through. Knock that through. Yeah, this is a really cool room. Like, yeah, it's so like we've a had the kitchen space, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, had the kitchen design. So the kitchen's going to be <coughs> along this wall and along here. Yeah. And then we're going to have a nice big island here um, with seats there. And then that side of the room is going to be kind of living living space, maybe an L shaped sofa, separating it like that. TV over there. Oh, brilliant. Do you know who you're going to use for a kitchen? So we've had quotes from Magnet and Howden's. Yeah. Um, we're just deciding now, both have come in at a similar price. We're thinking we like the Magnet design better. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see? That's the Oh wow, yeah, design. I like the, um, all the features, like the door handles and the yeah. tap and that. So a nice big color. Like, American style fridge freezer there. Yeah. Um, nice big island. Tell them to watch it. Now I ain't talking my pockets. Just know we ain't running out the way that we stock it. If I got it, you got it. If I call it, she slide and tell her to mop it. Yeah, I got that shit going. Then she took that thing off and bring it around. Going at it till I'm on. Put that nani in a hole. I'm beating it down. Wow, this is different. Yes. Uh, which way do you want to start? So we'll start in this one. Start this way. So careful of your step up here. There's yeah. some floorboards that <laughs> definitely don't want, don't want you to going fall through the floor. Down the level, Alex. So <laughs> this is going to be uh, another bedroom. Yep. So this one, as you can see, is kind of slightly in the roof. We'll keep this as like storage space, or we'll put like a door in there or something. Yeah, it's big, isn't it? Big yes. Yeah. Lots and lots of storage. Have you space. redone the roof? 
Uh, no, no, roof, roof has stayed the same. This is the only room that doesn't have an ensuite. Okay. But it does have a private off suite, <laughs> uh, which will be uh, just over here. So you'll come out of your bedroom door there. Out of there. And then this will be your private off suite. Oh, right, great. There. Another bedroom then there. Yep, so we've got another bedroom in here and then the ensuite in there. We're taking these out and these three timbers here, so they'll come out and it will just be one nice big open landing space. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's all fairly minor stuff, to be honest. And I remember um, this room. I do, yeah, I remember coming in here last time. Actually. Yeah, there was no window there at all. It had been blown out in a storm last time yeah, and it was all boarded out, up. It? Yeah. And then you'll have the, yeah, the ensuite in there for this one. More storage space, so we'll put like doors there and doors there because it's just you, you want to make some kind of use with this extra yeah. space and there as well yeah. and yeah so that's the extent of it it's uh, much more extensive than it looks like from the outside yeah yeah massive it's so yeah, it's just huge it's so yeah. vast isn't it and so, the ceiling heights in here is still great yes oh there, there's one one thing that we have to do that again we didn't originally realize we needed to do was you have to put in something called an AOV uh, which I think it stands for an automatic opening vent uh, right. which is essentially uh, an automated VLUX window that right. connects to the fire alarm system. So we're gonna have to cut open some of these timbers up here, yeah. create kind of a tunnel going up to the ceiling and put a VLUX window up there. And if and when the fire alarm goes off or the smoke alarm goes off, it will automatically open to let smoke out. Um, that's just one of the regulations that you have to do these days as well. I don't think you have to do it for a six bed, but because ultimately we're going yeah. for an eight bed down the You're line, doing it now. we wanted to do it now. Makes sense. Get it done. Yeah. So. You got better when you met me a minute. You said you're done trusting, but you did it. Move low key, but I really know you with it. Why you not shalom when you really got them digits? I'm average room rent. For like a we would like hope about 500 a room yeah yeah maybe maybe for um the one downstairs with its private patio a little bit more quick maths in my head says that's quite a nice monthly amount yes you know if it goes the way we hope it goes then it should cash flow fairly well what do you think the refill will come in at probably around 130 to 140 in total wow yeah so including the, the landscaping of the the garden yeah which is quite a bit around the side and exactly yeah, okay. so something around there and, uh, you know, all the various reports that you have to get. We had to get a, uh, a thermal and acoustics ac expert in to come and do a report about the specifications for the, uh, the acoustics and what insulation we need. We also had uh, a damp proofing guy come in and, and do some damp proofing injections. A building inspector, you know, all, all these Everything. chunks of like, that's a thousand on that report and that's a thousand on that report and that's a thousand on that report right. that you just... It just adds up. It all just adds up. Um, but, you know, learning a lot and a lot of this stuff is okay. reusable for the next project anyway. Uh, so the purchase price, we got this for 188 in the end. 188, yeah. 188. Um, so we're going to be about one, yeah, 140-ish in on, on the refurb and various architect costs and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And at the end, we're hoping a, a lot is dependent on these extra two rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally like a so hundred grand. Commercial <laughs> value. valuation if you get the extra two rooms, is that right? Uh, it, it, it would be a commercial valuation anyway, okay. but the extra two rooms are very valuable for the, the final valuation. Got it. <laughs> so ideally we'll be looking at 400 plus wow, at okay. the end, I hope. Yeah. Um, but yes, a lot Depending is riding on, on those rooms. Yeah, okay, well, fingers across. For yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. No, thanks so much for letting me come round. Yeah, like, no worries, man. I hope, hopefully I can uh, make a trip coincide with the finish. I'd yes. love to see it at the end. Yeah, any time. Um, right, interesting tour around the house with Ollie. I'll be sure to try and come back at the end. I always learn new stuff. And people are often asking me, am I coming to HMOs? Because I'm planning to do HMOs. The answer is not yet. But I always want to remain a student in the game. So I always learn something new. And I definitely did today. Uh, but thanks for watching as always. I will see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.